Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of What Can Contrast Do? This is a uh, short little mini-series, basically taking viewer questions from my Facebook page from this past week and um, making a short series of videos about it. So uh, this one was, if you go, if you watched the last video, we answered the question, can you paint Reaper Bones minis directly with um, contrast paints? I won't spoil the surprise, but it's not really a surprise. Uh, and the next one is, how are Reaper Bones minis gonna do it with the contrast paints and a bit of surface primer? So I've used some Vallejo surface primer right here onto this uh, lady dwarf. And we're gonna use just a couple colors. We're gonna try some of the flesh tones, um, some of the um, uh, orange tones on the hair, and then a couple other colors just to, just to try and knock out some base coats. She's wearing a lot of armor, so like I'm gonna, I would still use metallic paints to base coat that. I wouldn't use these. <laughs> <laughs> Although I could use like a gray or the black maybe and then highlight them afterwards, but I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna toss down some some of the basic stuff So let's do some uh, contrast dark oath flush for the skin and see how that looks and then maybe the fugan orange For the hair and see what kind of results we get. So the con dark oath skin. She does have like a, a Sonia um, a red Sonia kind of like band across her hair there, so I'm not gonna touch that So I think this is a Werner clock sculpt now, Reaper Bones Minis do seem to be like perfect candidates for these because they tend to have like big exaggerated details. I think, yeah, like I said, this is a Warner Clock sculpt, so nice rock proportions, and that's lots for the, the, the contrast paints to work with and sort of like pull out the detail on. Um, I don't want to do too many colors at the same time because I don't want them to blend together, but let's get some of that. I'm just going to move that around a little bit so it's not too too much in the eye recesses there. That's a nice dwarf skin tone. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm using a cool color gray. Um, so obviously there's going to be some some sort of like of that tone popping through, but it's got like a nice ruddy flush. Uh, and then let's grab that orange. Where is that? It's a fugue orange. Uh, but it's just red. Griff Hound orange, this one right here. And we'll do that, give her some flaming red orange hair. Uh, this is a base coat at least, and see how that turns out. So let's do that, let's do the hair. And I think we're gonna give this a minute to dry after that, and because I wanna carefully not have these bleed together. I'm not getting the orange on the, the skin or the armor. And that's nice, I really like that actually, that gives you a nice, like so certain things I think these contrast paints are gonna be really good for, Hair and fur are definitely one of them. Um, I actually, well, the first miniature I test painted these paints with is a Reaper Wolf, and I'll show you it in a second uh, while I set this down to dry after I finish the hair. Um, and I think the reason for that is that it's lots of tiny little details that are a super big pain in the ass to paint when you're painting them by hand. These just flow into the recesses and give you some nice <laughs> a contrast. So there, so there's the skin and the hair done. Let's let that dry for a second. Here's the wolf. Um, and you can see here, I just did it, I, I was trying to fade the paints. So I just did some browns through some grays, through some of the beiges, just to see how they'd go. Um, and I used the skeleton horde on the, the teeth. And I'm actually really happy with how the teeth and the furs and stuff turned out. And this is over the same primer. Um, I mean, it's not, it's literally just four base paints. I used the, the um, black on the, the base, the, the sort of built on base. But it's not like, it's a quick and dirty paint job. Like if you're like a DM and you're trying to get monsters done, this is definitely like a legit way to just like pound out Reaper Bones minis. So let's let this dry for a second and then we'll do some more colors. Actually, you know what, no, I can actually do, I can do like her tabard and stuff while I'm waiting and maybe the leather, the padded leather that she has. Let's use one of the browns that I haven't tried yet. Uh, Brown's really dark. We can use it for the boots. Snakebite leather. That's there's a there's a paint from the 80s and 90s that I haven't used before, and now it's come back and does not. It is not the snakebite leather of yesteryear. I used to use snakebite leather to paint gold, not metallic metal gold. That was like my jam. So there you go. Yeah, you do the padded leather. Oh, that looks really good actually. You can you can even see just now the transition actually looks really good between the light and the dark brown. It's funny because one of the things that I'm having to, to do with these paints is be patient, because I'm never sure what they're gonna look like when they dry versus what they look like when they go on the model versus what they look like when, when they're in the pot. And I said this when you, you sit in, um, uh, if you go through our, our longer show where Mike from Epic Duck joins me and paints some miniatures while we chat, um, that is one of the first things that I recommend uh, to anyone trying to sell these paints is make yourself like a color chart. Go get yourself some minis, some bones minis, some space marines, whatever, and just dump paint on them and um, 
and and have like a this is what it looks like when it's dry because it's really hard to identify when you first get these pots how it's even going to look on the miniature like i'm just I'm, I'm literally sort of like playing blind right now um trying to figure out how it's going to look when it's done i like that though that's pretty cool and then what's a cool complimentary color to all that that leather let's do some blue 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 is good blue look at all these colors i haven't tried levite on blue yet so we'll try that on the on the tabard and maybe the shirt. Oh, I missed some some of that brown though. There's, it comes up, it comes across the front basically. That bit of um, padded armor and it comes to here. It comes to her belt. Yeah, it goes to there and then goes across the other side as well. I'm actually really happy with that snake bite leather. And weirdly, it looks a lot like snake bite leather. Like the effect of where it goes transparent at the edges is that same yellowy brown as old 80s and 90s snake bite leather which i think is really really funny like they kind of nailed that one as far as like what the overall effect is when it's done um you can tell that the folks the folks in the design uh team who are working on the paints right now and doing all that stuff uh definitely have an eye for the paint range and that's a that's a really good catch there is that literally that ends up looking like old snake bite leather when it's dry oh do i want to do a leather band yeah i do and do the, the band across her eyes there as leather. Oh no, I'll make it metallic. I'll do it metallic later on when I go and touch this up. Because one of the things I'm gonna do is with all these minis, once I've got like these base colors down with the contrast paint, I wanna come back and like finish them with uh, five paints. If you sit, if you just listen to the, the, the Let's Talk um, about about these paints, uh, one of the things I did with Mike is I said, let's do, a, let's do a, a contrast challenge where you paint like whatever size army for whatever size game. Um, but you can have five paints that aren't contrast paints. And that's gonna be a lot of fun. It's the five paint challenge. It's just contrast plus five paints and see if you can do an army. And my picks were gold, silver, beige, black and white. Cause I'm pretty sure I can make all the other colors out of these just by tinting those colors with the contrast paints um, to do highlights and stuff later on. That's my, that's my jam. That's what I'm gonna try and do with just those new paints. So I'm going to try and do that with these miniatures as well and just see how the effects are when they're done. Oh, I like that blue. This is the Leviathan blue. It's very saturated. Nice and strong. That's going to look really nice when it's dry, I think. Get her shirt painted. And again, you do have to be careful with these when you're painting with them because like you're blocking in colors, but you don't want stuff to bleed together. And so I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm just kind of like freestyling it here where I should probably be going slower and waiting a little bit, but I'm just trying to like get the colors down. We're gonna give uh, her some time to dry and uh, be back in a second and, and show you the next stages. Well, she's pretty dry now and it's looking pretty much as it did when it went down. I'm pretty happy with the skin. It's got a nice base tone to it. The orange hair actually turned out really nice. And the snake bite leather literally just looks like old snake bite leather. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna block out the metallics, I think actually with the Black Templar um, and then use the Wildwood uh, for the pouches and then the interior of that shield and then all the handles and the weapons. And then that's gonna give me my last little bit of base coating so I can go down and I think pick out everything else with some actual like Citadel paint. So I'm gonna use my, my, my th five allowed colors to try and finish this model off. But let's do some base coats on here. So yeah, let's do the handle of the ax, that same brown. And then these pouches and the belt. I think we'll look good that same brown too. And I'm gonna go through the Black Templar and do the weapons and armor and stuff because I can blend that up to a silver. I've got, um, I think I got Stormhost silver. Yup, that's one of my five colors I've picked for doing these models on top of the contrast paints uh, to try and challenge myself to get these done. And this, this Black Templar should give me, should lay down a nice foundation that I can just highlight. And if I wanna blend that Stormhole Silver with a bit of this Black Templar, that'll give me a, a way to tint it and make it a little bit darker. And that's pretty good. Giving us some nice depth to all the armor plates and the weapons. So what I'm doing is I'm basically doing a wash before I put a metallic down here. I'm getting all the detail kind of like popping and then I'm gonna go home and I'm just gonna go and highlight it afterwards basically with a metallic, do all the edges and stuff. It's, it's not the way I would normally do things, but it's certainly a way you could quickly get these colors down. 
um, and then bring them back up again with just regular Citadel layer paints or whatever layer paints you want to use. You don't have to use Citadel, obviously. I'm, I'm mostly just using them because these are already Citadel paints and because the people watching this video will probably then be able to recognize what I'm talking about <laughs> and know what colors I'm talking about. Yeah, that's going to look pretty good, I think, because it's already going to give me some fading and just make her armor look kind of like battle-worn and beaten when it's all said and done. And so, I, again, if, if when this dries, you're just going to have kind of some, it looks like old iron armor. I think if you're doing Reaper Bones minis quickly and you're like a DM, you're trying to do them for your D&D campaign or whatever, th these, this will be like a legitimately finished miniature. Like, it, it, it'll look good enough that you could throw it on the table and have a little adventure with it. I certainly wouldn't say it's, um, uh, you know, like, not table ready. <laughs> It's just, it's it's a quick way of getting sort of definition down in the model. It's almost like doing a colored inked tin. Uh, for those of you old enough to remember inked tins, they were when um, miniature companies first got their first cast of a miniature from the either the caster they were using or from their own casting room. And they would put them in their mail order catalogs because this is from back in the time when, when you wanted to order something, there wasn't an internet to go to. So you went to the back of White Dwarf for your, your current catalog and you found the product code for something. And then you mailed them an envelope full of money <laughs> with the product codes, the things that you wanted. Uh, it was hard to get miniatures to show up because they were just bare metal um, in a black and white catalog. And so what they would do is they would take the bare metal miniature and they would ink it with black ink and that would cause all the details to pop up. This is reminding me of doing that except it's got color. So it's like a color, colored inked tin. Um, which I just think is funny. And I'm gonna do that little circlet around her head, just trying to get it to pop out. So when I put some metallics on it to look good. And that's actually pretty cool. That's not a that's not a bad effect um, if you're just doing iron with the black templar. Because it's you, if you look at it, it's got kind of a nice fade to it. And when I pick out the edges, it should look pretty good. So what I want to do is I want to put something on that little dwarf face belt buckle she has. Um and I kind of, I'm tempted to do like a brown because it's going to go up to gold. So I'm tempted to just throw like a brown color on there. What could I use? That dunes? Yeah, let's try that. Let's try the contrast agaros dunes. That might be neat. And put some, oh, that's going to work. Yep. Just, it's actually, it's, it's actually really close to the, it's a little bit more yellowy, but it's really close to the stink by leather. It's not far off at all, just tone wise, but I'll just hide that with some gold. And that should look good. Let's give her a minute to dry again, because I think she needs that before I start picking at her with actual colors and real paintbrushes. All right, so Lady Dwarf is pretty dry, um, and that means it's time to start mixing some of these with some metallic. So let's get some Stormhost Silver on the palette. My, my ancient jacked up Citadel palette. That's from the, uh, the, I think this was from the original, or the, not the original, the transition between the, the current and the, the old paint line. So there's some Stormhost Silver. And obviously you can see I haven't cleaned it for a while. It's been doing a lot of work. And some of this Black Templar, let's see if we can mix these two together and get us some nice transitions between the two. So I'm gonna make myself basically, there you go. See, I'm making myself a darker, a darker metallic and start just picking out some details here, picking out some armor plates. Oh, that's gonna look great, yep. So what's nice is all the definitions been picked up by the Black Templar already. And I can just quickly go through and pull out all the high areas with the metallics. And this is just cheap and cheerful, right? This is a this is a Reaper Bones figure. I'm not going crazy here. I'm just picking out all the high spots. Now that I've got all the definition popped out by that that paint. Oh wow. Yeah, that was that was really quick actually. The axe. She's got her backup throwing axe there and inside her shield, which is pretty cool. Gotta always have your backup axe. Just in case you lose your first axe, get a second axe to throw at people and you ask them a question. Or sorry, axe them a question. Yep, and that 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 nice contrast paint underneath, and actually we'll make this circlet iron as well. She's a dwarf. She's got the she's got the iron will of the dwarves. An iron circlet. Don't make things out of weak soft gold, make them out of steel. I wonder if she knows the riddle of steel. The answer is probably. And yeah, and being able to mix the, you're never gonna basically have the wrong tone if you're mixing the contrast paint into a lighter color because it's gonna blend it down. And I can use that fade around all the rivets to 
pull out the stuff on the edge of the shield. Let me make sure I get the back of the boots and stuff there. And then what I'll do is I'll just use pure Stormhost Silver. I mean, I'm just using like a medium layer brush here, an old medium layer brush, it's pretty jacked up. Go through and pick up the boots. And we'll just cut out the edges. So some pure Stormhouse Silver. And just like pick out some bright edges. But all that nice depth and richness to the color is already there because of that, that contrast paint. So again, just, just being able to bang in colors and get yourself a nice sort of like depth seems to be, seems to be definitely working with these paints. Cause like that's, this is gonna finish off her armor, right? I'm just gonna do all the edges, kind of make it look like there's some wear and tear on there. Around the sides, around the back. And that was, that was just off of a pure Black Templar. And actually, I'm just going to pick up the chainmail as well. Just with a partially dry brush, just to make it pop, kind of. And her circlet around the top. Yeah, and then tops of the shield. Just use the side of the brush. Pick up the top of the shield, top of the arrow. Sides of the arrow all that nice rich depth on the rivets and stuff was already there from just throwing down that black templar that's a that's a trick i will definitely use again for doing armor because like you sometimes what happens with a wash is it muddies your metallics um, and i like the citadel gloss washes for that reason but just working back up from an already like transitioned color i think looks a lot better i'm pretty happy with that actually that turned out really cool so let's do some real fast work what, do we want? what else do we want to paint here let's do some fast work with some gold uh, and i picked a really strong gold for my five colors retribution armor um because i'd rather if i have silver and i have a strong gold i can actually almost make anything in between so i'm just going to put that over top of where i put her belt buckle before so i think that's going to look nice is there anything else i want to have in gold yeah let's do that little dowie symbol on her axe the little arrow that's on either side. I already picked it in silver, but whatever, we'll just go over it again. I think that's good enough. Oh, let's do the buckle on her. She can afford gold belt buckles. She's an adventurer. She slays dragons. And then, uh, mm -hmm. too much wood armor brush there. Grab some of this retributor armor, mix in some of this Stormhouse silver to make a nice highlight color. And then pick out the edges. Oh, and the studs on her belt, too. Let's do those. Let's do the studs on her belt. Yeah, that's definitely a, a poppin' sort of gold. And let's highlight that skirt and then do her skin, and I think we're just about done. Um, and maybe the hair, so I can make the hair pop. Oh, we'll do the blue first, though, actually, because the reason I picked beige is sometimes you don't want to add white to a color, but I always can get away with adding beige. And what did we use again? We used, uh, not Basilicum, we used the, was it Leviton? Yeah. No. Yeah, Leviton. Where's the Leviton color that I was using? Grip Charger Gray, Creed Camo. They all look so similar. I can't, I can't tell what's what. Shish Purple, Basilicum Gray, Black Templar. Is it a Kelly and green? No, I had a, I had that blue. Where is it? Where's it gone? This is, this is the worst. Did I put it over here? Oh, Leviathan blue. I threw it over to one side for some reason. Um, if I, if I add beige to a blue, actually, I can make a nice baby blue and that's a nice color for contrasting usually. So let's grab some of that and then blend these two together. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice highlight color in between these. And we'll just give some highlights to her tabard. And what's funny is these are almost the same as the natural highlights from just the way the contrast paint dried. And then just a little bit lighter, a little more beige, just to pick up the very edge. And the top of her shirt. And then what we'll do is we'll go into the shield, 
grab some of this and just do just the top edges and the inside edge. I, I find with things like this, just making the edges kind of glow a little bit makes the whole shield pop. And then we'll do the corners just in there to make that blue kind of look old and faded a little bit. Cool. And that same beige I'll use to blend into, what was the one we used? We used snake bite leather. Snake bite leather, like it's 1999. Uh, where'd you go? There you are. Grab a little snake bite leather. Grab a little bit more of that. I don't even know what beige I grabbed. I think it's one they don't even make anymore. It's an edge paint, flayed one. Flayed one, edge paint. I don't think that they make the edge paints anymore. I had a complete set of the edge paints and I, I literally just over at my desk uh, and I was like, what's here in my paint rack? And I grabbed the closest thing that looked beige. So I'm stuck with it now. Can't change your mind in a paint challenge that you made yourself to randomly just call out Mike on camera. Uh, and there we go. So we're just going to pick out the tops of all these from the padded sections. Oh, that looks really good. Yeah, just, just the pads of things just to give it a little bit of pop. And so yeah, so my, my theory was correct. These actually work really well just to tint paints. So if you did want to highlight these, as opposed to trying to match them to the Citadel paint range, I would actually just use the contrast paints themselves and tint, uh, tint them with a lighter color. Like use the lighter color as the base for that color and then just tint them with the contrast paints. Because the contrast paints are so strong anyway, like just the amount of pigment in them that um, you're, you're getting a good, you're getting a good, a good amount of like color variation basically by throwing them into a light color, like a beige or a white. And get these straps over here. Yeah, man, that's pretty good. And then last but not least, let's see if this beige can get some, what else did I use? Did I use Fire Slayer? No, I used Dark Oath. Let's throw some Dark Oath and this beige together and see what happens. I'm betting I can get a nice highlight on that flush. And just a little bit of this beige. Some dark oath. A little bit more of that beige. What's well, really strong. Get a nice rosy color though. And let's highlight the skin. Get the cheekbones. Cheekbones, chin, and bottom lip. That's the trick for faces. And chest and her neck. And then her hand over here. Just picking out all the raised areas and her knuckles and her wrist. And then maybe one more just with a pure bit of that beige. Get the nose and the cheekbones. Chin. And then get the, uh, get the jawline there too. And let's give her some eyes. And that's why I picked black and white. <laughs> Mostly to paint eyes. And sometimes you just need to get a strong color to provide some depth and definition. And the nice thing is Werner Clock always sculpts giant eyes, giant like anime eyes and everything. So they're really easy to pick out in black. And my eye painting technique is the two dots technique. I don't do like, I don't try and paint a white pupil into a, uh, an eye. I paint the whole eye socket black and then I go in with some white. Let's get some ceramite white here. And I dot the corners. And one and two. I probably let that dry first. <laughs> that was not 100% dry when I went in there. And just pop out the corners. And one and two. And the eyes are done. And if I want, I can go with a little black and even just give her lips a little bit more definition. And there we go. So the eyes are done. I go in there and just line her mouth just slightly. Just a little bit more definition in the lips. And boom, she's pretty much done. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't really, for, for like a quick and dirty paint job, I don't really need to do much more than that, I don't think. Like just throw in some highlights and she's pretty much finished. Oh, let's do the hair. Come on, Ash, you're here. Just finish it. Just, just give everything a highlight. Grab a little bit of that orange. Uh, don't want to use white or beige. I'm going to use beige. I'm just going to mix it right in this big pot of beige, beige right, right here. Actually, I need a little bit more. It's dry. Grab some more beige. 
mix it in, and then just add some more to that darker pile. And we'll give the braid a little highlight. See what we can do here with the braid. Uh, there we go. Everything's reversed on camera, so I'm trying to figure out how to keep it on the screen. And just the top of the head. There's lots of definition on there already, so I'm just kind of trying to give it a shine. Get the braid touched up. And I think we're just about done. Everything's got some definition. Everything's got a little tiny bit of highlighting. And we'll just throw something on the base there. Get my nice big brush out. Oh, what haven't we tried? What haven't we tried yet? Uh, the dunes I didn't like when I tried it before. It was very yellow. Let's do Gorgon to Brown. We haven't tried Gorgon to Brown. We'll do that in a little built-in base. And I might go and dry brush that or highlight it afterwards, but probably not. Oof, Gorgon to Brown's strong. That's a strong brown tone. That's very saturated. But it's pretty cool. And then just let it dry. Yeah, it's pretty slick. There we go. So there's our there's our dwarf warrior ass uh, with uh, just a quick thrown on foundation of these contrast paints, and then using nothing but black, white, silver, gold, and a bit of beige, uh, using the same contrast paints to basically create some highlights and and blend it up. Not too shabby. So I think my verdict is these definitely work great on Reaper bones. There's lots of detail usually, and it's usually chunky detail too. Um, so let's throw this, pers uh, this person's uh, finished product. I'm going to probably touch up the base a little bit um, on the spinner so you guys can see a 360 of it, and we'll call this done. So before I show you the Dwarf Warrior S, here is the Dire Wolf that I painted. This is another Bones model. Um, and this is actually my test model for the Reaper, like these contrast paints in general. You can see I tried to do a transition between the brown and the gray, and then the, I think I used the Dunes. Uh, color and then I use skeleton horde for the teeth and again there's no additional paints on this one there's no highlighting or any kind of extra details this was just reaper bones uh, given a soft Vallejo airbrush prime and then painted with some of these paints and it's pretty slick uh, you know for quick and dirty paint jobs we're getting monsters done if you're a dungeon master and you're trying to get your bones collection painted I think you can definitely do worse so uh, for speed painting some reaper bones and especially monsters and furry things I think the, the contrast paints are definitely a, a big thumbs up and so here's our Dwarf Warrior S um, with a uh, bit of highlighting done by simply putting uh, black, white, uh, silver, and gold into the contrast paints and using them to just sort of like highlight up. I think for a Reaper Bones Mini, this is a pretty, a pretty solid tabletop paint job. Would look great in anyone's RPG uh, and was, of course, super quick to do. You guys saw how quickly it was done. The, the biggest part with these contrast paints is just waiting for them to dry so that you can either block paint in the next section or you can go in and add in some... Uh, some detail, but I'm happy with her. I think she looks great. Uh, wonderful Werner clock sculpt. Um, and of course, I think the, the contrast paint certainly, for Reaper Bones in general, with their nice, big, raised, chunky details, are gonna do a great job of just picking out all that, um, all that sort of like carved in surface area and are a great, a great tool in the arsenal, especially if you're trying to get your, your massive Reaper Bones one, two, and three collection done um, and out of the closet onto the gaming table. So I'm giving it a thumbs up for Reaper Bones. Uh, if you're looking for speed paint and some stuff, this can certainly help you do so. So there's another What Can Contrast Do? Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's be back for another one soon.